Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is the Sentinel, watching over Geekdom, and welcome back to Sentinel Reviews. A few announcements before this review. As you can see, this is a different spot. Um, I recently acquired a little living room to my living space. Long story. And I've been slowly moving in here, so as I get things worked out, you might see my recording area, my recording space, change up a little bit. Also, this is a good test because the acoustics in here are a little different than where I was previously recording, so we'll see how well that goes. Although, that does mean I probably need to start investing in some recording equipment, like a pop filter and a boom arm and other things. Probably a better mic to cancel out background noise and such, but we'll see how it goes. This is basically a test. Anyway, the, the review, the review. Sorry about that little distraction. Just letting you know what's going on. And we're doing Big Finish again. I was originally going to do the War Master Series 3 Rage of the Time Lords, but I'm putting that off for a little bit. I, I don't have my thoughts together on that one. So, and I figured, oh, it's been a while since I did a story arc, because the last one I did was the Jamie trilogy. So I thought I would start. I would do another one. I originally wanted to do, or at the very least wanted to start, Six and Charlie, because, you know, five days from now, the day of recording is July 12th, 2019, um, Big Finish is releasing The Legacy of Time, their big 20th anniversary spectacular. And in the Sixth Doctor story, which features Charlotte Pollard... They are teaming up with a character, a detective, detective named Menzies, who appeared in the first Six Doctor and Charlie story, The Condemned. So I wanted to start the Six Doctor and Charlie story arc to, you know, just get an idea of who that character is, so I know what to look forward to when Legacy of Time comes out. That didn't happen. Boy, that. I am just doing tangents today. Uh, anyway, as you can see from the title, instead, I will be doing a much shorter story arc. We will be looking, we will be going to the Companion Chronicles, and we will be looking at the Sarah Kingdom trilogy, starting with Home Truths, released in November of 2008, written by Simon Gurrier, directed by Lisa Bowerman. Home Truths, yeah, excuse me. Home Truths stars Jean Marsh as Sarah Kingdom and Neil McGregor as Robert. And just an update with you, because I was talking about Legacy of Time. At the time of recording this, again, July 12th, Legacy of Time will be released in five days. And I believe I mentioned this in another video. It is six stories long. Given how long my usual box set reviews go... Legacy of Time will be done in two videos. And while I do those videos, after this review, I will take a hiatus from the Sarah Kingdom trilogy. So my schedule, no date set in stone, will be Home Truths, Legacy of Time Part 1, Legacy of Time Part 2, and then the remainder of the Sarah Kingdom trilogy, The Drowned World and Guardian of the Solar System. So back to Home Truths. Well, I've talked a little bit about the Companion Chronicles, so I won't go too long there, but who is Sarah Kingdom? Because I haven't really talked about her that much. Well, she was a companion, and yes, she is a companion, I know there's a debate about her, who appeared in the mostly lost first Doctor story, The Daleks' Master Plan. This is the second role played in Doctor Who, played by actress Jean Marsh. She first appeared as Princess Joanna, Richard the Lionheart's sister, in another First Doctor story, The Crusade. And then she appeared as Sarah Kingdom in The Daleks' Master Plan. And then she appeared as Morgane Le Fay in the Seventh Doctor story, Battlefield. Outside of Doctor Who, Jean Marsh is probably best known for her role in, and as the co-creator of Upstairs Downstairs, as well as the main villain, Queen Bavmorda, in George Lucas's fantasy epic, Willow. So, Sarah Kingdom. If 
we look at the Daleks' master plan as one story rather than the individual episodes. Because I notice we Doctor Who, we Whovians do that when we talk about Classic Who. We look at the stories more than the individual episodes that make up the stories. Anyway, if we look at Sarah Kingdom, she and another companion, a girl named Katarina, were Doctor Who's first one-off companions. Companions who traveled in the TARDIS, helped the Doctor for one adventure. We would see later one-off companions like Richard Mace in The Visitation or Lady Christina in Planet of the Dead. Katarina and Sarah Kingdom were also, and yes, spoilers, because these stories have been out for some time, Katarina and Sarah Kingdom were also the first companions to die. So, that's where we're going. Now, Home Truths. Where do I even start here? Because there is a lot to talk about with Home Truths, and a lot of it will carry over as I talk about the rest of this trilogy. So Home Truths opens with a man named Robert, played by Neil Neil McGregor, arriving at in the middle of the storm at this house on an island where he meets an old woman named, and it's Sarah Kingdom. And she decides to tell Robert a story about an adventure she had with the Doctor. Now, throughout the entire Sarah Kingdom trilogy so far, and I need to emphasize that so far, because right now, I'm in the middle of the Guardian of the Solar System. I haven't yet finished the story, the tr- that story yet. But the Sarah Kingdom trilogy tells two stories. This story of Sarah and Robert, which serves as the framing device, and then the story within a story, which is Sarah telling about these adventures she had with the Doctor to Robert. And... Across this entire trilogy, I found the story presented in the framing device much more interesting than the story within a story. That's not to say that the story within a story is bad. None of them are. They're all really good stories. It's just the framing device I was much more enthralled by. I was much more engaged in it. And I'll I'll circle back around to the framing device because it is a major factor in what makes this story so good. Anyway, the story Sarah tells is about in Home Truths is about her, the Doctor, and Stephen arriving at this house. And how do we explain it? Basically, the house can read your mind and grant your wishes. So, for example, the Doctor is thirsty and out of nowhere there is suddenly a glass of water on the counter. Or... Where did it go from there? Well, yeah, that's the only example I'll give. And at, and one of the things I like about this is it presents Sarah as naive, which, from what we saw in the Dalek's Master Plan kind of makes a little bit of sense, you know. Mavic Chen, who, depending on how you look at the Dog's Master Plan, was either the primary or secondary antagonist. Mavic Chen was able to manipulate her into believing that the Doctor and Steven were enemies of the solar system and that her brother, Brett Vion, was a traitor and she killed her brother in cold blood. So it presents that same kind of naivete, this story kind of presents that same kind of naivete with Sarah, but it also expands on it, you know? Like, she she calls this house they're exploring a palace, because where she comes from, the houses, the living quarters, were much smaller. And then, strange things start to happen. No, that's not, that's not a good segue, um... Sarah sees these photos of the previous occupants of the house, this young couple, and shortly thereafter, Stephen, the Doctor, and Sarah find the couple dead, and not knowing what happened. 
Oh, here, here's the thing. I don't want to spoil this story because it's fantastic. I want you guys to go out and hear this story for yourself. So find, trying to find talking points to talk about while avoiding spoilers is really difficult. So I will just say this. Home Truths is great. As of right now, because again, not finished, it is probably my favorite story in this trilogy. So get it. I No, no. I'll I'll hold I was going to go into spoilers, but I'm going to hold off on them a little bit longer. One of my critiques or no, not one of my only critique about this story and it's a critique that happens in hindsight is Sarah's reading of the Doctor and Stephen. Now, because the Companion Chronicles is two people, a companion and a guest star, and the framing device is in some way that companion recounting their story to the guest star, the actor in question, in this case Gene Marsh, has to present all the roles. You know, it's kind of like an audiobook. And... Sarah's reading of the Doctor and Stephen is not good. I mean, it's a testament to Simon Gurrier's writing that they're still portrayed really well. They're still in character. It's just Marsh's reading that's a disservice. And I'm especially bringing that up because in the other two stories in this trilogy, The Drowned World and The Guardian of the Solar System, her reading for them is much better. And I also like the house itself, this situation that's set up. Because one of the things I really dislike about New Who, and I'm someone who does enjoy the new series, is it over-explains things a lot. Like, it gives you this magical concept. Ghosts, mermaids, witches, werewolves. And then it over-explains it. You know, it explains and explains and explains until all the mysticism, until all the wonder is gone. You know, and I always kind of found that a disservice. You know, like, that's why I like Midnight so much from the 10th Doctor's era. Because what is attacking the Doctor and that group is never explained. And it's one of the few times in New Who where it doesn't. And here, in Ho and Classic Who never had that problem. Well, it might have a couple times, but never to the degree of New Who, certainly. And that's what's going on here. We have a house that grants people's wishes. It reads their minds and grants them their deepest desires. And it's never explained what that is. You know... Is it a ghost? Is it a spirit? Is it science at work? We never know how this house is capable of what it does. And that makes it so much more enthralling. And so I'm going to stop there. Home Truths is a great story. I'd rate it a 9 out of 10. Again, because of what I said about Marsha's reading of The Doctor and Stephen. And get it. That, in fact, get this entire trilogy. So with that being said, I'm going to get into spoilers. Because as I mentioned, Sarah died in the Dalek's master plan. So how can Sarah, an older version of Sarah, be here telling this man, Robert, this story if she died? And it's not Sarah. It's the house. The house, she in that story, she was telling about, the house in that story she was telling, that's the house Robert is in. And when things begin to go at their worst, um, when things began to get at their worst, because the house wanted to serve someone, the house wanted to grant someone's wishes, so it tried to take Stephen and the Doctor away from Sarah and hold them hostage as a means of keeping her there for it to serve. And, you know, what basically what happened is Sarah saw the house is, you know, it wanted to do good. It wanted to help people, but it didn't know how. So she 
left. Ugh. This is this is really tricky to explain, but she grant she she wished the house would have a conscience, you know, to be able to determine right from wrong, to figure out how to help people, to figure out what's crossing a line, and to know when it's gone too far. And in order to do that, what the house did is it made a copy of Sarah's personality. And that is and that is what the house is now. It that imprint is Sarah running the house. And then we get back to the framing device. Robert is a scientist, or so he claims. So as Sarah's been telling this story, sort of setting it up to be ghosts or whatnot, he's been I'm a very logical person. These things don't exist. And then as he goes on, we find out that that may not be the case. He's actually some sort of law enforcement. I think he's an officer. I, I don't remember what he said he was. But, you know, he said, you know, the laws of our society as it is now don't allow for ghosts. So, I came here to investigate this place and... I can't, I can't leave knowing you're here. And this exchange is really good. Throughout this entire trilogy, as a matter of fact, Gene Marsh and Neil McGregor are wonderful. They play off each other beautifully. And this story really establishes their relationship well. It establishes their dynamic, you know. They're, they become friends, but their friendship, their relationship is always very tense because of the events surrounding them. And Sarah tells Robert, you're not the first person to come here and try this. I've Other people have come before you. I've told them my story, and they've decided I can go on. However, I am an officer. I am a space security service member. And if you decide that you need me to leave, I will follow the letter of the law and leave. And the story ends there. Like I said, I, this is a strong setup. This, The two actors have wonderful chemistry with each other. And Gene Marsh is a great narrator. And Simon Gurrier's writing is really strong. And I give this a 9 out of 10. So, there's nothing more to say on Home Truth. So, join me next time, after Legacy of Time, when Sarah and Robert's relationship will shift as she decides to tell him another story. The story of the drowned world. So what did you think? Start a conversation in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Click the little bell next to subscribe to get notifications when I upload. Because subscribe doesn't do that. In the link in the description box below, you'll find the link to my Twitter, where you can get updates on me and the channel. And you'll find the link to my Ko-fi, where you can support the channel if you'd like to. This is The Sentinel, watching over Geekdom, and I'll see you guys next time.